remember in the old days, but not like yeah. for being a super strong player. So it's funny now that like he's maybe the best player in the country. Urshifu and Xian Pao, Riley's first two Pokemon met by the Incineroar and the Ogre Pond on Jody's end. Leaving the Intimidate into the King Gambit can always be a bit of a gamble, but it pays off here as the Chin Pao will be at minus one attack, as will the Urshifu, but thanks to Raging, or not Raging, Surging Strikes, uh, might not be as big of an issue here. Yeah, I think uh, we're seeing the, the start of what's likely to be a theme in this matchup where uh, both sides potentially threatening a lot of damage either yeah. direction. Uh, Jody probably a little bit more on the back foot here, but you know, it has the fake out option, has the parting shot option to try to reposition. And now these Pokemon want to get burned. Uh, also, just the general weirdness, right? Where Ushifu, in theory, loves facing down this Incineroar, but tough to actually take advantage of that because of the follow me on Overpond. Ogrepan does threaten to redirect Surging Strikes. We're going to see Riley swap out that Chen Power right away. We'll bring in Ogrepan instead, so wanting to possibly try and catch a Fire-type move or even a Will-O-Wisp into that slot. Mold Breaker will activate, and a U-Turn comes out into Ogrepan, doing a big chunk of damage. Yeah, no fake out coming from Incineroar, so uh, perhaps it will be a will o wisp It seems to be what Rally's fishing for, and uh, I guess the great thing about U-Turn is now he's making the switch after knowing that Incineroar did not use fake out, so uh, it's Dragonite who might have to risk getting a potential burn here. Dragonite comes in, very great defensive swap as it will resist all of fire, water, and grass type attacks that could be coming its way. Eats up that Horn Leech very well, and Ogopan gets a little bit of that HP back, and a Flare Blitz comes in, so a great defensive swap from Riley with that U-Turn. Holding my breath there, but no burn from that Flare Blitz. And uh, yeah, really nice turn by Riley. I think something for Riley for me is like, I don't know if there's any player who's better at getting himself in advantageous board states and then just swinging away and taking advantage of that. A really nice pivot there where that's sort of an awkward turn one, didn't really give up anything. And now both of his Pokemon are in a much better position to start dishing out some damage safely. I think the nice part for Jody here though, is that now that the Ogre Pond's on the field and we know that Riley's two back Pokemon are the Champa and Urshifu, Will-O-Wisp into that Dragonite slot becomes much more safe. There's no follow me on this Ogre Pond like you mentioned, Scott. So if it goes into that Dragonite, which doesn't even have Protect either, something gets burned unless Incineroar gets knocked out. We're going to see a terrestrialization happen here, though, the first one of this round four match, and it's going to be the Ogre Pond Hearth Flame. Embody Aspect will activate and give it a plus one attack boost. So any attacks coming out from this Ogre Pond on this turn will be very, very threatening. Yeah, pretty scary, but uh, interesting to make that choice, you know, taking away that grass type uh, when facing down the water type ogre pond in this of the field. He was uh, now going to choose to become a pure water type ogre pond <laughs> by terrestrializing as well. Uh, the two ogre pond styles facing down. You're dropping the flying type weakness, so aerial ace will now be neutral, but you do gain the weakness to grass. So if this is a grass type attack coming into that slot from Riley's Ogre Pond, that could be pretty disastrous. We do see an Ivy Cudgel come out though. So big fire type damage into Jody's Ogre Pond, a great defensive terrestrialization, but it doesn't matter. The plus one attack Ivy Cudgel is enough regardless. Yeah, the U-turns really uh, paying dividends from that Urshifu and yeah, nice type chart. Yeah, <laughs> type chart doesn't matter anymore. Stubbing Tantrum comes out here, does do super effective damage, but won't be enough for KO as Willibus does go into that Dragonite slot. So Dragonite is burned, but this Ogre Pond is sitting at plus one attack still. Since Incineroar is on the field, it cannot be intimidated yet. This is a very, very scary Ogre Pond. Yeah, I think it's kind of a great turn for the Rally Sunday Fielder. As you mentioned, something had to take a burn, so why not get some damage out of Incineroar? Uh, this is a uh, Safety Goggles variant of Incineroar, so no way of healing that damage, at least not without uh, you know a convoluted series of events involving Amoongus healing with Palin Puff later, perhaps. Uh, Fluttermane having to come out here and help deal with the threat of these Pokemon. So a uh, nice early advantage for Riley. And now uh, Incineroar is sort of in a weird spot, right, where one Pokemon's already burned, it can't burn the other. Uh, both of them resist Fire-type attacks. So while Fluttermane's looking pretty good here, uh, Jody's not gonna have a whole lot he can do with the slot other than perhaps you know, just taking the party shot and pivoting out to Amoongus. Ogre Pond also looking very threatening offensively. We did see Jody's fourth Pokemon being that Amoongus, so neither Fluttermane nor Amoongus can really take an Ivy Cudgel anymore. A plus one Terrifier boosted Ivy Cudgel is very strong, uh, especially into that super effective grass type in Amoongus. So if Ogre Pond gets the chance to fire off Ivy Cudgels into that slot, especially considering the Spluttermane is holding Choice Specs, cannot protect itself, it could be big damage. Shadow Ball comes out first though, that Choice Specs Shadow Ball does a lot to Ogre Pond, but not enough for KO. It will have the chance to retaliate with an Ivy Cudgel and claim a one hit KO on this Spluttermane. Critical hit, even more, why not? <laughs> Maybe not that critical in this yeah. particular case, <laughs> but it's a big knockout. And uh, Dragonite gonna be a tag a little bit more damage than their Stopping Tantrum, this one doing half as much because of the burn. Yeah, the burn keeps the Incineroar around to go for this parting shot. 
will bring Ogre Pond back down to neutral attack. And because Incineroar will have to come back in at the end of this turn, it'll be down to minus one. So that's good for Jody at least. But the bad news, the Ogre Pond can just swap out, come back in, get that Embody Aspects boost, and it will be at plus one and faster than the remaining Pokemon on Jody's end for the rest of this game. I have a hard time seeing, Scott, how this Ogre Pond doesn't just kind of win the game from yeah, here. Yeah, say the same thing. Go ahead. Things look really bad, right? Yeah. Or, uh, <laughs> I feel like even after, like, as soon as that Ogre Pond uh, on Jody's side of the field went down, I just know what you do, right? Because uh, yeah. it's sort of just sitting there doing nothing. It's threatening a free knockout to the other slot. You're like, maybe instead he could have, like, tried to bring a Moongus in, like, beta protect or something. But right. I'm still not totally sure how that's getting you to a winning board state. Yeah, I don't think it is <laughs> at this point in the game. Spiky Shield coming up from Ogre Pond, keeping it safe for at least one more turn while Dragonite goes for Stomping Tantrum into this Incineroar is enough for the KO. So Jody goes down to one Pokemon remaining to Riley's four. Really tough board state here, especially considering Amoongus has really never been known for its offense. <laughs> Yeah, we saw some pretty aggressive Amoongus play the last round, but uh, both of these players using the more conventional uh, pacifist Amoongus, and uh, I don't think that's going to work out here for Jody. As we see, uh, Forfeit getting locked in here and a decisive 4-0 in this game yeah. one from Riley. That game was pretty quick. Uh, the Ogre Pond came in, and at that point, I, the, I mean, the crucial point was certainly the IV Cudgel KOing Jody's own Ogre Pond. You know, Jody used the terrestrialization, tried to resist that IV Cudgel, but ended up not mattering thanks to that U-turn chip damage earlier on. So I think if you're going into game two here and you're Jody, you probably have to be a little bit more cognizant of how strong that Ogre Pond can be, even without a Swords Dance. Yeah, we've really seen the Hearthflame Overhunt picking up over the course of the past couple of weekends. Um, I felt like uh, by the end of the previous regulation, things have shifted almost entirely to the Wellspring Ogre yeah. Pond. But uh, we're seeing why initially trainers were so attracted to uh, this Ogre Pond form, uh, just absolutely dishing out the damage. That's a huge Ivy Cudgel coming through here. I thought that might have been a critical hit. It does have that, that boosted critical hit chance, but not even. <laughs> it was just a, a raw plus one Terrifier Ivy Cudgel that did that much damage. And even that big chunk on the Incineroar with the Stomping Tantrum ended up being relevant because at that point it was just the, the two burn stomping tantrums are still enough for that KO. I think maybe if this doesn't KO, you can try to find a way back with some pollen puff play, but knowing that the Instant Roar was gone, I think Jody just knew that Amoongus could not 1v4 this. Yeah, I think for me, there's two takeaways for th that game. Uh, one is that was like the most Riley game I've ever seen. Yeah. Right? Like, starts out with sort of a bad lead combination, gets to the perfect combination of the Pokemon field, swings until he wins the game, right? Uh, nobody's better at playing that way. He does it masterfully there. Uh, the other thing is that you were talking about the concept of kind of like team comfort before this match. Uh, Maybe Riley knows that calc, and maybe Jody doesn't. Right. And that's kind of what happens there, right? Where uh, I, I don't know what, you, what else you do if you're Jody a little bit there. Or like, <laughs> uh, I think it, that would have been a tough spot to get out of no matter what. But yeah, I mean, uh, maybe instead you go for a spiky shield there instead or something if you right. realize you're going to be knocked out, uh, like getting a parting shot out, and it changes the way the game plays out quite a bit. Uh, at least in this game, Jody will have a better idea of how much damage that, that uh, Hearth Flame Ogre Pond can do. Although, still not really, right? Like, well, I know it does at least this many, <laughs> but yeah, yeah it's not like you that? get the number. <laughs> Where's that line? It's it's hard to tell just because the plus one Terrifier Ivy Cudgel can do so much damage and then even not even factoring in the critical hits. I think if you're Jody, the, the start of that first game wasn't too bad. It just started to unravel pretty quickly with that really good defensive swap into Dragonite. Incineroar leading again for Jody here. It will get another Intimidate drop onto these two physical attackers, but Amoongus is next to it this time instead of that Ogre Pond. Riley again going with the Chen Pao Urshifu combo. Yeah, I theoretically like having Amoongus out here a little bit more. Um, it's harder to make a safe switch you do, right? There still is the option of trying to, you know, block a Spore with an Ogre Pond switch, but uh, at least three of the four Pokemon in this team really don't want to be hit by Spore. Um, so, yeah, it's like the trick is to take a, or to keep the board position under control. You can't allow Riley to double pivot again and just pin both of his Pokemon. So this first turn is really important. Yeah, I, I like what you said there. There's less of an option to kind of swap willy-nilly here because catching a Will-O-Wisp or a Spore on something coming in, other than the Ogre Pond, of course, happens to be immune to both. Uh, but that would be a lot worse than possibly just taking like a Flare Blitz or an Ivy Cudgel into a resisted slot. Ogre Pond switching in here for the Urshifu will be able to absorb a possible Will-O-Wisp or Spore if that's what Jody opted into. Mold Breaker activates once again and Shan Pao goes for Protect. Not wanting to have its Focus Sash broken or be put to sleep or burned. Incineroar fakes out that Ogre Pond slot, though. That was a fake out into the... Uh, no, it wasn't It wasn't the Dragonite. It doesn't have inner focus. Uh, but Spore going into that Urshifu slot there. So Jody trying to catch the Chen Pao, going for Protect smartly as it did. Uh, but Riley seeing right through that, not allowing the Ogre Pond to get a status move. 
Yeah, I mean, and then once again, right, Riley has a combination of Pokemon in the field who are looking pretty good here. Uh, you know, Moonga certainly doesn't want to fight against either of these Pokemon now, so uh, it's a tricky spot, and uh, George has got to find a better way to pivot this time. Uh, showing the Terrestrialization, perhaps that'll be a means of more safely getting to uh, some other Pokemon. Terrestrialization will be coming out here. It's going to be the first of game two here in round four. The is the Ogre Pond on Riley's end again going to be terrestrializing, turning into a pure fire type, dropping that spore immunity, but more importantly, getting the plus one attack boost from Embody Aspect, empowering up the Ivy Cudgel even more thanks to the Terra Fire power boost. Terrestrialization matched here from Jody. It's going to be the Incineroar turning into a ghost type. Wait, <laughs> kind of good into like Sacred Sword, but you're losing the fire type resistance here. <laughs> yeah, awkward, right? I guess it yeah. probably feels like you have to, right? Like, well, right. I can't just like get double targeted and loot, uh, potentially lose Incineroar here, but, uh, and then Amoong is protecting, right? Uh, realizing uh, it has to respect the threat of this uh, Ogre Pond, so this could go better for Jody this time. A good start. Sacred Sword goes into the Incineroar, which is now immune, and stomping Tantrum, so two super effective attacks into that slot, now neutral or doing zero. It still takes a lot of damage from that stomping Tantrum, but more importantly, the parting shot comes through into Ogre Pond. We'll drop it back down to neutral attack, give Jody the chance to pivot out into something else, and possibly bring that Incineroar back in on a later turn. Yeah, I think it's a nice situation, right? Uh, this time, too, uh, Ogre Pond looking a little bit better in this matchup. Um, you know, it has to be careful with the uh, Chin Pao on the other side, right? Where um, it's going to do uh, I guess similar damage to before because now the attack drop is missing, but a uh, much better by Jody, right? And hey, you know, if nothing else, uh, this man has never seen a read he didn't want to try to make that stream <laughs> does successfully terrestrialize to gain immunity <laughs> to that Sacred Sword. It gains immunity to Sacred Sword, but it does open up the option for a Sucker Punch later on from Chen Pao. And I think more importantly, this Chen Pao's Focus Sash still intact. It's a really big resource there for Riley that becomes really important later on in the game because the Chen Pao, not always known for its defenses, but with that Focus Sash, doesn't really matter. You are going to have the chance to swing twice if you're facing down just one Pokemon later on. Focus Sash has looked incredible, too. It's all yeah. day, it just seems like nobody has the moves that chip. Uh, <laughs> this could be a lot more than chip. The big Ice Bitter coming down is Amoongus. Does over half to this Amoongus, which will eat its Citrus Berry and recover a bit of its HP. We do see, again, it's not Rocky Helmet, so Focus Sash stays intact, and Ivy Cudgel comes through from Ogre Pond on Riley's end. No Intimidate Swap coming through from Jody's Incineroar, so Amoongus will be knocked out by the combination of those two attacks. I think a really safe you know, double target there, considering the Terrestrialization and the option to protect are gone, but Ivy Cudgel in return should be able to KO Ogre Pond, so the big bad Ogre Pond has been knocked out. The, the scary Ogre Pond on Riley's end is gone, but Riley still has a lot of very powerful Pokemon remaining. Yeah, both Ogre Pond now have uh, traded knockouts of one another, but uh, I, I think on Riley's side, I, and you, that was clearly the way he expected the turn to play out, yeah. right? We're like, all right, Amoongus protected. I know I get a knockout if I double that slot. And if he made that choice, that means he already fought through that and believes that he's going to win the game from that situation, right? Yeah. Otherwise, he makes a different move. So I'll uh, we'll have to see what both trainers have in mind. But you'd think on Riley's side, if he went through with that trade, he's looking pretty good here. Yeah, you have to imagine he was kind of planning for that. Urshifu does come in. Will is holding that Choice Scarf, so will be faster than both the Fluttermane and Ogre Pond on Jody's end. But you really have to worry about going for Surging Strikes. The Water Absorb on the Ogre Pond on Jody's side uh, is a big deterrent, which actually makes this Fluttermane much safer than it would be otherwise. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a great time to get the Fluttermane in, right? Where it's certainly at least going to get to attack once. And uh, it's sort of a tricky turn to play as well, where like, uh, you're gonna, like mispredict which of Follow Me and Spiky Shield gets used here. There's ways where this looks really bad. Um, at least the Flutterman can't protect, though, which I think makes it a little bit harder for uh, Jody and keeps him honest here. And so we're going to see a switch. Incineroar comes in for that Ogre Pond, gets an Intimidate down onto both Chen Pao and Urshifu. Jody really hoping that the Surging Strikes doesn't come through here because I think either of these Pokemon are probably knocked out by it, but it is, in fact, U turn. Riley playing it safe. Again, not wanting to have that attack whiff into the Water Absorb. And Riley will have the chance to bring out his fourth Pokemon in this second game in round four. I really like that pivot by Jody there, right? Where I applied just enough pressure where there really was no option uh, for Riley but to give this up. Now this Dazzling Gleam is going to do a ton of damage Ooh. to both these Pokemon, sashing the Chien Pao and taking Dragonite below half as well. 
Really nice play there. The Dazzling Gleam does so much damage. We see Fluttermane attacking before Chen Pao as well, and also didn't even get targeted at all. This Dragonite does not have Protect. It is the Assault Vest set, and because Chen Pao is at minus one attack, a Sucker Punch surely shouldn't be able to kill this Fluttermane. So this is actually a much commanding, a much more commanding spot for Jody right now. Yeah, a super free switch with the Incineroar if he wants it too, right? Fluttermane doesn't need any help to pick up these knockouts, yeah. and uh, Incineroar, you know, has to be a little careful with the potential of Sucker Punch, so it would have had to fake out probably if it stayed in anyway. So yeah, why not switch it out? Uh, have the option of a fake out again later in the game and you know that's another means of, for which you can uh, get around potentially your shifu later so uh looking pretty good so far and Sonora does come back like you said scott the ogre pond will come back in for jody and fluttermane should get the chance to attack before it is knocked out the chin pal in fact does go for protect though does not want to lose its chance on the field yet Dragonite does not get the chance to attack though as a specs dazzling gleam will come through and should pick up another knockout here bringing rally down to two pokemon I mean, that's great, but now what, right? Right. Where, where Shifu comes out, and uh, you know, I, I don't know what the solution to follow me Dazzling Gleam is here. It's lose? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I, I that think doesn't sound good at all. No, it's, it's not. I mean, and Riley, I guess, possibly not even considering how much of an impact that good Incineroar in the back could have. You know, it was under half HP remaining, but being able to switch in and out and threaten this Water Absorb, uh, not allowing Urshifu to go for those Surging Strikes, which is really the only way there has to kill this Fluttermane, is so big here as Agurpan does go for Follow Me. We'll be able to protect the Fluttermane from any kind of attacks. Close combat comes through, though. A big amount of damage in Ogrepan, a one-hit KO, actually. That is not something I expected coming out from this Urshifu. Uh, but Fluttermane, considering it has been attacking before this Chen Pao, should get the chance to go for a Dazzling Gleam here, which should just seal up this game for Jody. I did not expect that close combat to KO Scott. Yeah, it's a lot of damage. I mean, yeah. Uh, kind of good information from both players, perhaps. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Ogre Punt faints a hero there where it does yeah. exactly <laughs> enough to allow well, Fluttermane to pick up this knockout. And I think both players are going to have a lot to chew on as we move into game three here. Uh, some things to think about that stood out to me in that game. Uh, I guess once again, I, I don't know how this Ogre Punt is trained, but it's really good at being knocked out by physical attacks so far. <laughs> uh, however, Incineroar uh, looking great again. You know, that uh, Terra Ghost at the time looked a little suspect right where it's like well i mean what does this really do for you uh, but right. apparently it does everything for him <laughs> yeah. and uh the turn that i keep going and going back to as i think about this game was that uh it turns out actually trading ogre pines maybe wasn't so good for riley after all yeah i think like you said that first uh terra ghost in the incineroar Maybe it didn't make a whole lot of sense to us right off the bat, but it meant that Incineroar stuck around that turn. And the Incineroar just existing for the rest of the game is essentially what won Jody that match, because he still had the chance to you know, pivot that and intimidate in and out, get the water absorbed, follow me in and out, and really just prevent the, the Urshifu on Riley's end from ever locking into Surging Strikes, which I think if you're Jody, that's a great way to protect your Flutter main from it. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, the Ogre Pond there, even though like, it didn't really do much uh, other than, I guess, crucially picking up the knockout in the trade against the opposing Ogre Pond, uh, just kind of like being there to be a problem for Urshifu the whole game was a big <laughs> deal. I mean, this is why the Wellspring Ogre Pond's usage is so high, right? Because yeah. uh, the Rapid Strike Urshifu is devastating, its power is overwhelming, and uh, it's much easier to win the game if you have some solutions to it. Uh, Jody bringing both the Ogre Pond and, uh, you know, Raging Bolt, even though we haven't seen it so far this set as solution to the Urshifu, and uh, I kind of see the drawbacks, you know, uh, it's some of why Riley opted to terrestrialize Ogre Pond both games, right? Yeah. Because uh, it gives this team comp, it's just very difficult for uh, Urshifu to be the Pokemon that wins in the game. Even the Amoongus on Jody's end, a great deterrent for that Urshifu as well, but also kind of invites the Hearth Flame Ogre Pond to go for that terrestrialization on Riley's end. You have to wonder if that's going to be Riley's game plan once again, because we did see it do a, a, obviously a lot of damage in that first game, taking a couple KOs there, but even so, it, it threatened a lot of damage in that second game and forced Jody to kind of pay attention to it, even though it doesn't have follow me. It, like, terrestrializing with a plus one attack boost is kind of a follow me in and of <laughs> itself. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how these players adapt, because I, I think they both brought the same, if not similar, lineups each game, but they played it very differently. Uh, well, we see something a little bit differently here all right, in Game all 3. Right. Uh, this time, uh, Rally opting to change things up. It's King Gambit making his first appearance in the series, and oh, uh, it's uh, found something juicy. He's going to catch that Intimidate <laughs> right on turn 1. Yeah, this is kind of the pitfall of leading Incineroar into a team that has King Gambit on it, because you do risk giving it a Defiant boost right off the bat. Luckily for Jody, though, this is kind of the best Incineroar you could have for the job in this case, because it is carrying that Will-O-Wisp. It is not Terrifier King Gambit. It doesn't have a Lumberry or anything that can protect it. 
it. Again, that Ogre Pond does not have Follow Me either on Riley's end, so a Will-O-Wisp into King Gambit should be pretty secure. If the King Gambit can, really can't dodge that Will-O-Wisp. Yeah. Well, it can use Protect. I think that's, that's one true. thing to keep that's in mind true. here. It's not like the Assault Vest variant. Uh, it's Black Glasses, so uh, Riley now probably going to see the same thing you are, right? Well, uh, if I don't do anything, I'm for sure getting burned, so yeah. how do I adjust? And you're just by bringing these Rashifu in, uh, at least in theory, but, uh, but now you got to worry about that Ogre Pond, right? Protect does come through. Will not be burned this game, but Incineroar, instead of going for will o -Bisp, goes straight for a fake out into that King Gambit instead. Will be no damage or no flinch in that slot, and Ivy Cudgel comes through into the Urshifu, takes a non-negligible amount of damage there, but ends resisting that Water-type move. So, so Riley sets up an interesting trade here through the course of his moves. Like, okay, well now if you want to, you can burn my King Gambit, but uh, I'm perhaps going to close combat that slot. Uh, Jody has got some interesting options though, right? Like, well, if you make that play, uh, I think the two Pokemon he's most likely to have in the back both resist close combat, so that's not really open. Uh, you know, do you go for the uh, surging strikes and just hope that there's no <laughs> follow me? I think the right play here is probably you switch King Gambit out and have to give that boost up. So uh, good job by Jody. Uh, but no, he's going to stay in, get some big damage for this U-turn, but uh, likely going to take a burn in response. Yeah, there's nothing that can come in other than this Ogre Pond that would be immune to the burn, but that would not protect the King Gambit if that is what Jody has opted for. Amogus coming out, though, instead. There's no Chan Pao this game. Amogus taking its spot. An Ivy Cudgel comes through from this Ogre Pond, does a Another like non-negligible chunk of damage for that us, but will us comes through and is avoided by King Gambit. That is a huge break for Riley. I guess that's one way to avoid the bird. <laughs> Literally uh, avoid it. Up the yeah. knockout and uh, King Gambit wants to win this one. It really does, and it's doing a great job so far. Ogre Pond on Jody's end does get knocked out by that Kowtow Cleave, and Jody's own Amoongus comes in. Now we're threatening with, with two different types of status here, the Burn and the Sleep, but Incineroar I, I don't know, it's it's threatening the Flare Blitzes here, but you can't Flare Blitz both. Uh, and obviously, you, you if you're Flare Blitzing either slot, you're losing a good chunk of your own HP. It's still not the worst spot, though, because Incineroar does have the safety goggles, Scott, so this is... Not, Incineroar has some play here, at least. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think it's not awful. I mean, the, King Gambit still finds itself in a similar situation in the previous game. But I think in Rally's side of the field, now you're just like, okay, well, how can I just trade my way through the rest of the game, right? I mean, again, that's kind of what he's known for. He just gets in a good board state and just fights his way out of it, right? And, uh, King Gambit is, you know, even if it's, uh, you know, neutered here eventually by a status condition, able to put a bunch of damage of that Amunga slot. Um, you know, maybe he can heal that off with a generator, maybe not. But I think, you know, one more knockout for Riley, this game would start getting pretty simple. No burns, oh, but a, a Flare Blitz the other right way. off See the ya. bat. Critical hit Flare Blitz from that Incineroar is a one-hit KO into King Gambit. A massive turn for Jody there. No need to eliminate the, the Defiant Boost with a burn. You can just knock it out instead. Paul and Puff going into Riley's own Amoongus. Another critical hit. Jody's hits are all critical to coming around this game. And a clear smog for a little bit of chip damage into Incineroar there, but a massive turn for Jody. Yeah, that's uh, huge. Uh, not only does he avoid, you know, or I guess, you know, uh, Knockout is the best status condition, right? Right. Uh, we're able to <laughs> yeah. not have to deal with the King Gambit for the rest of the game. That makes it much easier to play this Incineroar, where now he can cycle Intimidate as he needs to safely. Um, you know, potentially can have some issues actually doing that because uh, with Ogre Pond down, uh, Urshifu can potentially just, you know, surging strikes his way through any Intimidates anyway. But, uh, you know, you get sort of an interesting situation with Riley's side of the field. Uh, we have that Fire, Water, Grass core all still intact there, so... Um, you know, both sides of the field now going to have to try to position Pokemon in such a way that they can actually take advantage of that. Uh, Urshifu coming out here going to uh, threaten potential damage on Incineroar, but, you know, the expected response to that be like, okay, well, then I guess I'm Rage Powdering with my Amoongus. Yeah. So, uh, what will the response be? Yeah, you can lock into Surging Strikes now. There's no Water Absorb left, but there is still the Amoongus that had, can just redirect it. Uh, the Rage Powder will be affecting this Urshifu. It does not have the option to go for a Terra Grass or anything like that. So Urshifu, you know, it doesn't have to worry about doing negative damage with, with the Water Absorb healing, but Amoongus is still a pretty good stop with this Urshifu, and of course, we have the Ogre Pond in the back from Riley still, which I think is now the bigger threat. Yeah, I think it's scary. I wouldn't have been shocked if we saw like a U-turn in order to try to avoid the status condition. Like Riley also be, has to be careful he plays this turn too passively. You know, a U-turn potentially just allows a Pow and Puff from Amoongus to heal all that damage off of Incineroar. Uh, but we do see Rage Powder instead, so uh, Riley not going to at least take you know, a negative damage turn. <laughs> Surging Strikes does come through into this Amoongus doing paltry damage. We'll hit all three times, but leave the Amoongus very, very healthy. But Ogre Pond does come in for Riley now, which will be threatening big damage with something like an Ivy Cudgel later on. Three hits into the Amoongus will be followed up by an attack from this Incineroar. It is a Flare Blitz coming into Ogre Pond. That is some really meaningful damage because now the Flutter main in the back for Jody is actually threatening KOs on it as opposed to, you know, not being able to knock it out from full with a Shadow Ball. 
Yeah, we're uh, quickly winding up the situation similar to last game where last Pokemon uh, Flutterman could be uh, pretty scary. However, there is still the Amoongus intact on the other side of the field. Uh, but both sides now at a point where they really can't afford to give up any more damage. Uh, the next trades are going to be really important. And uh, Urshifu now locked into that surging strike. So on Jody's side, you feel pretty committed to needing to Rage Powder. It was scary next to this Ogre Pond. So do you now just give Amoongus up? Is there a trade Riley can make that will make that work out? Is there a trade Jody can make that will make that work out? The other issue now is that the Ogre Pond has not terastalized yet. This might be it. Uh, but until it does, it will not be a redirected by anything like a Rage Powder from the Amoongus. But it does, in fact, turn into a pure fire type. The third game in a row, Riley opts to terastalize his Ogre Pond, get the plus one in body aspect boost and boost the power of Ivy Cudgel with the Terra Fire. This Amoongus is not running the Terra Water like we see on some sets. It's actually Terra Fairy, so you cannot terrestrialize into a resistance anymore. So these Ivy Cudgels are going to be very scary. Surging Strikes, though, right away is going to be able to just KO this Incineroar. Yeah, uh, Amoongus uh, sort of failing in its duties as a support Pokemon here. I think it protect itself, allowing Incineroar to go down instead. So uh, Jody's bet that the, the way that he closes this game is with the combination of Amoongus and uh, his final Pokemon. It's going to have to be that final Pokemon. Ivy Cudgel goes into Amoongus's Protect. I guess the benefit of protecting the Amoongus there, even though the Incineroar did get knocked out, is that now you have the option to redirect a Surging Strikes from this Incineroar on Riley's, not the Incineroar, the Urshifu, on Riley's end of the field. It is holding the Choice Scarf. It will act before the Ogre Pond. So the Surging Strikes will have to go through before Fluttermane is able, to, or before Ogre Pond is able to Ivy Cudgel. Yeah, I think definitely the right move there. But uh, still, you know, it's a, a tenuous position, right, where uh, you know, you're going to potentially take a lot of damage in return, and now Fluttermane has to lock into a move, right? Uh, unlike last game, where it could just safely lock into a Dazzling Gleam, it's not going to work to close out this game, right? It's going to knock out Namungus eventually, so uh, sort of forced into locking into Shadow Ball here. We'll have to see how much damage it does. Yeah, it's going to be a really tough choice for Jody here because he will have to lock into one attack for the remainder of this battle. Riley not wanting to lose the Urshifu just yet, will be swapping it out for the Amoongus that is left in the back. I think a smart swap there, because if it does lock into Shadow Ball, then you have the option to just redirect it on a prior, on a following turn. Spiky Shield comes out here, not wanting to take any damage or a possible Spore, but Shadow Ball into the Amoongus slot. Great call from Jody, and that's a lot of damage. That is a critical hit into Riley's Amoongus, which might put it in range for one more Shadow Ball after the Citrus Berry. Yeah, sort of a interesting spot here where uh, I'm curious if Pollen Puff would have either, you know, at least got it low enough that perhaps a one Shadow Ball would have done it either way. Um, but yeah, a really interesting spot now where um, Urshifu is safe for now. Either of these Pokemon likely to be knocked up by a single Shadow Ball, but the other one's going to get to act here, right? So you know, either a Spore or an Ivy Cudgel, that Flutterman would be pretty devastating. It really would. I don't know if Jody has enough turns left in this game because you, you're going to get at least one more Shadow Ball off. But this Ogre Pond will be able to KO either of Jody's Pokemon with this Ivy Cudgel. Again, because of the plus one attack and body aspect attack boost, the Terra Fire boost on the Ivy Cudgel. And so I don't know that there's anything, even, even an Amoongus that terrestrializes into a fairy type might just be KO'd anyway. Yeah. So you're going to have to create more turns. Yeah, I wonder if you switch Ogre Pond here and like try to get him to knock out Urshifu so you get the Spore. Because right. I just don't know how you close this otherwise. It, yeah, I mean, it's got to be tough. Jody does opt to terrestrialize his own Amoongus. Turns into a fairy type, so it's not weak to fire anymore. But the Ivy Cudgels are very, very strong. Might just bypass that tight cut entirely. Rage Powder comes through here, trying to protect the Flutter main from an attack. And a Rage Powder from Riley's own Amoongus will redirect Shadow Ball from Flutter main. Shadow Ball will come out here from this Flutter main. Most likely KO this Amoongus, I'd have to say. It is Easy enough. Left. But Ivy Cudgel will attack into this Amoongus on Jody's end now. Let's see how much it does. Ivy Cudgel coming out here with the Terra Fire boost, with the plus one from Embody Aspect. Big damage into this Amoongus, and it is enough. That is a KO coming out from Ogre, Ogre Pond Harsh Flame into the Amoongus. Even a Fairy type Trostalization will not save it, and now Riley has two very strong Pokemon against this Fluttermane locked into a single target attack. Yeah, that, uh, that seems real bad, right? Where, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, Riley makes it, plays it safe there, just does the Rage Powder, uh, avoids having to make any reads. Again, you know, kind of rally at Riley's best. Just doesn't do anything silly. Now with these two Pokemon, it's a pen, and a uh, really fantastic set once again. Comes down to the wire here, but uh, Jody thinking it through, but yeah, doesn't see any yeah. outs. I don't think there are outs anymore. If, if the Shadow Wall could somehow hit both of them, then maybe, but that is not the option for the Fluttermane. Riley will move on to 4-0.